Hey guys, Croft is here. In today's video, I'll be covering the translation of the opening dialogue between engineers that was unfortunately deleted from Prometheus. In the theatrical version, we only witness a lone engineer approaching the waterfall, however, in the Blu-ray edition, multiple engineers take part in the sacrifice ceremony. This deleted scene may be the most important scene in the franchise, but there is even deeper, hidden layer to it. The early Prometheus script actually has a dialogue between engineers and the scene that reveals a few mysteries from the movie. This extended conversation between engineers only appears in the early Prometheus script and it was removed even from the Blu-ray deleted scene. This extended opening with the translated dialogue sheds light on the engineer mythology and the reasons they created humanity and later decided to destroy it. I always felt like the engineer scenes were unusually short, as if the production team really wanted to edit them out for some reason. However, the deleted material explains some of the engineer's actions and motivations in the movie that otherwise would seem confusing. So let's actually review the deleted scene with the engineer dialogue in the script. The shadow hovers over the river and gets smaller as it lands on the rocky ground next to the river. There is a rumbling of iron as the unseen vessel's gangplank opens. Three cloaked humanoid beings, engineers, step down from the gangplank and onto the rocks. One of these engineers stops and allows the other two to continue without him. Although the deleted scene does not perfectly follow the script, various behind-the-scene photos and concept materials pretty much confirm that this was the original scene that Ridley Scott was planning to film. However, something happened during the production process or in the editing room, so we only got to see about 10% of what was intended to be in the opening scene. The two engineers, one walking behind the other, stop right next to the river, they turn and face each other. The one standing closest to the river has a young, majestic, pure white face and black eyes. The other is hundreds of thousands of years older than him and that is evident from the elder's wrinkled, thin and almost wood-like skin. The elder holds out a box, simple but complex design, and kneels down on the rocks and holds up the box. The elder, take this, this is the blood of our lord, for we cannot create as the gift was stripped from us long ago. As always, we will continue our attempts to create a perfect Eden, much like our own. You, the chosen one, will create it in your own image. The young engineer kneels down and bows his head to the elder, he takes the box. Before we get to the rest of the scene, let's unpack what we just learned from this small passage that is crucial to the understanding of the engineer lore. The box that the elder engineer has in the script is actually the same cup or a bowl that we see in the movie that has a smaller cup with a goldish liquid inside. The Elder Engineer refers to it as the blood of our Lord, which is later revealed in the script to be the blood of the first deacon, a godlike creature portrayed on the mural that the engineers worshipped. When the Prometheus crew entered the temple, we can barely see the obscure carving on the wall depicting a xenomorph-like creature that is actually an ancient engineer deity, the first deacon that they were trying to resurrect. In the movie, right in front of the deacon mural we saw a green crystal, however instead of this crystal there was supposed to be the sacrificial bowl from the beginning of the movie. The same bowl that contained the blood of the engineer lord, the first deacon. There are a few behind the scene photos with this bowl instead of the green crystal, and this bowl also appears in the trailer confirming that the deacon and its blood were supposed to play a much bigger role in the movie. So who is the first deacon, why engineers consider this creature their lord, and why its blood allowed them to create life on other planets and procreate? Let's first answer these questions before we review the rest of the deleted scene. 
The elder engineer also says, for we cannot create as the gift was stripped from us long ago, referring to the fact that for some reason engineers lost their ability to reproduce, which brings us to the most interesting part of this video. To fully understand what the Elder said and answer these questions, we need to look into the Prometheus documentary that actually explains the entire history of engineers and their complex relationship with humans. The official Prometheus documentary also reveals why engineers lost their ability to reproduce. For a few seconds, the documentary shows something called the Master Narrative that not only clarifies the engineer lore, but also explains why engineers created humanity and why they potentially decided to end it. By looking at the Master Narrative, this is what we're able to read. Their civilization, meaning the engineer civilization, is millions of years old. Once, engineers expressed themselves as humans do, taking pleasure in music, color, and story, but they've long since learned to see in more dimensions than we do. Their arts and ornaments exist on planes unperceptible to human senses. Their constructions look dark and grim to us, but the engineers' eyes see far more than our own. From this paragraph, we learn that engineers are able to visually perceive the world in a greater spectrum, which is the reason their eyes are dark and blurry and their arts and ornaments aren't visible to humans. The next paragraph explains why the gift of creation was stripped from engineers and they could only procreate with the blood of the first deacon, just like the elder said. Individual engineers live for a hundred thousand years. Ages ago, their race abandoned sex and gender and started reproducing by more abstract methods. In recent millennia, they have ceased to reproduce altogether. Looks like using radical technological innovations, engineers found a way to reproduce through artificial methods and over time, they forgot how to procreate in natural ways. However, at some point their artificial methods, like the blood of the first deacon, failed, but they already changed their biology so much that the natural methods were not available either. This concept illustrates the dark side of technology, which can replace some fundamental aspects of our lives to the point that our survival becomes dangerously dependent on this technology. For example, right now, most of the information, including the internet, is stored on electronic hard drives, even the instructions about how to build these hard drives, computers, and even factories. So in the case of some cataclysmic event that destroys all electronics, like a giant solar flare, all information on these hard drives would be lost. And it would take a long time until we can recover all the lost information and rebuild the technology to the same level. The master narrative proves that Ridley Scott and his team came up with really original and creative ideas. However, they were too different from the established alien lore, which is likely the reason the studio had to cut most of them from the film. The next paragraph shows even more extreme ideas that writers were exploring at early stages. The engineers believed themselves to be on the verge of a great evolution, a transcendence in which they will abandon their physical form and take flight into the 10-dimensional universe as creatures of pure energy. I feel like this part of the engineer lore was not developed in the consecutive scripts because the studio was already taking a bit of a risk by introducing engineers, the black goo and the deacon and even these themes were barely explored. The next paragraphs from the master narrative had a few blank spots because of the way the pages were presented in the documentary, however we can still get the majority of the text. Engineers shepherded the human race towards sentience and civilization, they altered their DNA, their habitat, teaching humanity teachers. This sentence implies that engineers helped humans in the transitioning to civilization and were teaching their teachers, which may imply that they taught Jesus or Enoch, just like it's mentioned in the draft script. 
The next paragraph reads, they believed humanity would be ready to receive the gift of the engineer knowledge and move through universe as scientists just as engineers did before them, perhaps to reach transcendence on their own. The engineer knowledge in this paragraph could mean some sort of a technological or societal breakthrough similar to the agricultural revolution or the transition to information age with the internet. The engineer knowledge can also refer to the scene in Alien Covenant when David mentioned that he learned the engineer ways which allowed him to control their ships. A research station was set up on LV-426, a moon in a nearby system. Benefactors studied the problem of humanity and prepared something. These two paragraphs imply that engineers wanted to give humanity the engineer knowledge that would drastically advance human civilization. However, humans had some kind of a flaw that stopped engineers from giving their knowledge. Ridley Scott actually explained in a podcast what this human flaw actually is. When talking about the reason engineers hated humanity, he said it is because humans are violent species and one should just look at what is happening around the world to see that. The master narrative also confirms that the temple on LV-426 was a type of a research laboratory where engineers were doing their bio-experiments. From the alien master narrative, we learned that engineers lost their ability to reproduce because they started procreating with technology, and eventually their biology changed to the point that they could not reproduce naturally anymore, which is the reason they had to use the blood of the first deacon, their version of God, to create new life and procreate. The early script explains who the first deacon creature was, but before we get to it, let's review the rest of the deleted opening scene. The elder speaks, primitive yet complex, clicks and talks not unlike an aboriginal bushman. The elder, let your body become the dirt, your blood become the waters, and may your soul become their way back to us. And even though there were no subtitles, we can easily understand what's happening here. They're saying goodbye. One last look between the three, a sense of importance, something meaningful is about to happen here. With this particular choice of words, the script clearly conveys that this scene was a religious ceremony, which is not really the impression we get from the movie. In the opening sequence, engineers created humanity using the blood of their god, which brings a question, who was this deacon deity that is also portrayed on the mural? In the scene when the crew enters the temple, David translates engineer writings on the wall and reveals the translation to Wayland. Our Lord came from the Chosen One in the time when our ancestors birthed life. His sacred blood was our salvation. His sacred blood through our lips birthed life on other worlds. When David communicated with Wayland in his sleep, he further explained what he learned from the writings. Somewhere in their late history, engineers evolved and lost the ability to both mate and reproduce. But before they did, they found a creature, presumably an ancient facehugger, that impregnated one of them with a foreign body. A creature came from him, they called it the Deacon. They, engineers, worshipped this Deacon and after its death, they used its blood to plant the seeds of life on other worlds. The blood ran out of course, but they tried to recreate the gene pool of this deacon's blood, but instead they created something else. From the early script, we learned that when the blood of the first deacon ran out, engineers were trying to re-engineer it themselves, which resulted in the black goo. This aspect of the engineer lore was completely removed and Prometheus never really explained what the black goo actually was, however, the early script finally puts the missing pieces of the puzzle in their place. After engineers lost their ability to reproduce, they were procreating using the blood of the first deacon, presumably a sentient version of a xenomorph. After the deacon's death, the attempt to bioengineer its blood led to the creation of the black goo, or the pathogen, a substance that does the complete opposite of creating new life, it creates violent monsters. 
What do you guys think about the opening engineer dialogue? Do you think it should have been included in the movie, at least with subtitles? Or do you think it would have removed some of the mystery surrounding engineers? Thank you guys for watching, like this video if you enjoyed it, and subscribe to the channel for more alien content. My name is Croft and I'll see you in the next video.